What's up guys, Kron Sin, welcome back to Everlasting Summer. Where we last left off, we had our minds totally blown and discovered that we're in some sort of time loop. So let's just quickly get back into it and see what we can find and see what's up. The camp leader got up and turned off the light. Yes, it's all just like that guy said. Why did I speak to him so calmly and properly, I wonder? I should have been shivering from horror. I mean, he was, he scared me to death, basically. That pioneer didn't have much credibility, but I had a feeling that he's unable to harm me. As soon as I thought it'd be a good idea to ask someone else, but ask something else, fatigue overtook me and I passed out. Cheers. New day, day seven. Let's get out there as soon as we can. The bright sunlight was striking my eyes, even through my eyelids. I stretched out lazily and quickly got myself out of the bed. So is this going to be like the last day until the loop starts again, or what's going to happen? Huh, it was 2pm. Looks like yesterday really finished me off, and my body required much more time to recover than usual. And no one's waking me up. I had a stroll around the room, thinking of what I should do today. Obviously, my life in the camp would never be the same again after everything that I'd heard from that strange pioneer. And if everything's just as he said, I have plenty of time ahead, but maybe not. I grabbed my hygiene kit and went outside. Hygiene kit? I managed to take only a couple of steps as somebody ran into my back. I turned around and saw Elisa. Hmm, I haven't seen you in a while. Hey, be careful. She said she indifferently. She said indifferently and ran on her way. She held some kind of bag in her hands. Ah, uh, whatever. Yet another ordinary day in this crazy place. I finished brushing my teeth and then spent an eternity washing my face with ice cold water to bring myself to my senses and refresh my head at least a bit. I felt a bit better after that. Suddenly, hope struck me from nowhere. Hmm. It wasn't a hope that I'd be likely to leave this place safely. Rather, I just didn't want to believe that everything is as bad as that guy told me. Oh, God. Good morning. I heard a faint voice coming from the woods. Someone stood behind a tree. Morning. Are you ready? Ready for what? I looked again, and it seemed like he was a pioneer from the BS. Indeed. I was prepared for such weirdness today, so I wasn't really surprised and started this conversation quite clear-headed. You didn't believe him, did you? Oh, I thought it was the, the other guy. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Everything that he said. Alright, yeah, but what is your opinion on what's happening? I'd already distanced myself from the outside world and decided to treat everything happening to me just like a fictional film, not reality. Hopefully it would give me more room to move around in terms of situational logic analysis. There is an exit, there has to be, he said excitedly. I don't know, but I'd like to believe that too. If you just... Simon! Oh, Slavia. I turned around. Slavia was standing right next to me. Who are you talking to? Um, no one? Just talking to myself. I hardly think it's worth telling her about aliens from parallel worlds. She probably can't even see them anyway. I mean, they're all me, I think. Have you prepared already? Prepared? For another hike? No. Today is the last day of the session. What? Oh shit, this is the last day. A stupid smile settled on my face. There will be a bus this evening. We're leaving. Holy cow, I was ready for even the most incredible of twists, but was this what that mysterious pioneer was talking about? Probably it was. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it off that bus. Well, apparently, I'll have to go for a second lap and live yet another week in this camp. Yeah, that's, good. that's what's going to happen. But this time, I know everything. I haven't packed yet. It's not like I have much to pack anyway. Okay. So basically it's a seven week cycle, I guess. Slavia shifted her gaze. Seemed like she wanted to say something, but hesitated. Well, see you then. Yeah. I had to ask when we're leaving at least. Hmm. 
I went to the square with the intention of discovering that. There's got to be something, someone I know there. But believe it or not, there was only Genda waiting for me at the square. Probably all the pioneers are busy with packing. Why don't I go see Lena? I took a seat on the bench and just stared at the sky. It turns out that today I just have to wait for the departure. Pass out on the bus and wake up in this camp again. Just like the first day. Everything was drowning in silence. It's exactly that type of summer day when the sun seems stuck in the sky. The birds and crickets have gone for an after-lunch doze and the wind is saving its energy to deliver long-awaited coolness to people in the evening. It suddenly crossed my mind that I haven't just missed lunch, but I haven't had any breakfast either. Yeah. It was ridiculous to search for anything in the canteen. Ridiculous. The pioneers had surely cleaned up everything just before the departure. <laughs> Probably. I scratched my head and made my way to Olga Dmitrievna's cabin. Surely there should be something edible in the table's drawer. Hmm. Someone called for me just as I approached the door. Shurik and Electronics swiftly approached the cabin. Are you already packed up? Already packed up, I answered, imitating him. <laughs> you haven't quite been yourself the last few days. Um, what makes you say that? How should I know? You'd know better. I mean, why are you so concerned, mate? No reason. A real pioneer always treats a comrade's problems as his own. I cast a sceptical look at him. Yeah, but you were uh, you tried to kill me the other day. Thanks for your concern. I'm fine. There actually was half a loaf of stale bread and a piece of smoked sausage in the drawer. How did it get there? I've ate everything with deliberate pleasure, washing it down with smelly water that Olga Dmitrievna probably used to water the plants. Ew. Ew. That, uh, that's not good. Just as I finished, someone started knocking on the door. I would have taken a pass on the water. Come in. Uliana rushed into the room. Oh, it's just you? She said disappointedly. Yeah. And who did you expect to see? A circus complete with bears? Uliana giggled. Where's Olga Dmitrievna? I don't know. I haven't seen her, actually. I shrugged. Why not? I don't know because... I don't know. What do you want from her anyway? Go to ask her something before the departure. Okay, I'll tell you that you, I'll tell her that you are searching for her if I see her. By the way, why aren't you packing up? Like I have much to pack. I mean, I don't have anything actually to pack. <laughs> see you. She cracked a sly smile and bounded out of the cabin, slamming the door behind her. And still, it's really strange that no one seems puzzled by the sudden departure. I mean, they probably all knew about it. And why am I the only one who is not expecting? Because I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about anything. I still don't know anything about anything. Like, everyone really cares if I pack my things up. As well as that, doesn't anyone care that this is the last time we're seeing each other? That, that's more important. I was about to ask that. That's more important. No one, I, I was expecting everyone to be saying goodbye to each other, but no, one just, no one's really caring. The words of that guy in the forest yesterday about all the camp's tenants being unreal suddenly sprang into my mind. Well, right now I'm more ready to believe it than ever. The desk drawer where I found my breakfast continued lots of odds and ends. I grabbed a pencil and a piece of paper, examined them for some time and then slipped them into my pocket. Just in case. I had no intention of watching over all the pioneers running around and packing, so I just lay on my bed and didn't even notice how I dozed off. Ah, is it go am I going to wake up on the first day? It was someone's voice that woke me up. A familiar pioneer was sitting directly opposite, with his back to me. This music is so creepy, but it's amazing. I'd gotten used to him a bit since yesterday, and it even seemed that I stopped fearing him. Is this the one that tortures people, or is this the one that's trying to run away? Hey, why do you always hide your face? Because you shouldn't see it. If you say so. I wasn't in a position to argue. Oh. So, what are you going to reveal this time? You already know it's the last day of a session, don't you? Yep. And you've already spoken with that one. Yep. So, what did he tell you? Nothing special. He said that there's an exit out of here. The pioneer burst into laughter. 
Yeah, I believe that too ages ago. And now? And what is now? I have my past, my life back then. He stopped talking for some time. Anyway, it was all a long while ago, so I don't really remember. The future's all the same. Loops, loops, loops. Repetitions of the same story. Where is this now? Well, I hate to say it, but I'm not yet as lost in time as you are. Oh, that's nothing. That'll come with time. He broke into diabolic laughter. <laughs> There's just one thing I don't understand. What's your reason for coming to me? What do you expect to achieve? Me? Nothing really. So why did you come then? It's just because you, him, and others like us are the only real people around here. Given everything he'd said to me already, I just wasn't ready to believe that all the local tenants are just puppets in some kind of hellish stage play. Are you sure that you're right? Right about what? Well, that you're right about everything. I can't be right or wrong. I didn't choose this world. I didn't throw myself into it. I'm just here. You're just here. Listen, I've already got a headache from your philosophizing zone. I was kind of puzzled myself as to why I was so calm talking to this mysterious pioneer. It was because it's me. Well, here it is. Right in front of me. All the fantasy and devilry that's happened in this camp. Here it is. An explanation, at least a partial one, for how I got here. Here they are. The answers I've searched for for such a long time. On the other hand, my behaviour was quite logical. While I couldn't explain what was happening, this cuckoo guy just talked and talked. But it's not like his words changed anything. Then what's the point of listening to him? Oh no, you will soon understand everything yourself. Someone was knocking at the door. I got up to open it. It was Slavio on the doorstep. You came to see Olga Dmitrievna? No. Come in then. <laughs> Come in then. I was 100% sure that the pioneer had already disappeared. Turns out, I was right. Slavia took a seat on the bed, and I snuggled against the wardrobe in the far corner of the room. Hm. She was distinctly nervous. Did something happen? Not really, it's just today's the last day. Well, I'm already aware. Better late than never. Well, so I thought. I mean, we probably won't see each other ever again. It's a small world, as they say. But maybe you'd give me your address to write letters. Hmm. I would have, if only I knew it myself. You know, let's do it the other way around. You give me your address, I'll definitely write to you upon arrival. But why won't you want to give me out yours? Why won't you want to give out yours? Well, we were just about to move, so you never know. It's better, it's better if I write to you. I tried to put on my cutest smile to make my story look more credible. Ah, okay, it's fine then. Slavia got up and seemed to be fu Wait, 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 wait. What about the address? Don't leave. Please. Let's do it later. An expression of sorrow and disappointment crossed her face. Ah, Well, I don't think I could get Slivers ending in this current playthrough. I just thought, I just shut the door and right then heard the spiteful voice of the pioneer from behind. Well, happy now? You've hurt a girl. What have I hurt her with? What should I have said to her? My dear, write to my dear granny in the village? <laughs> or should I have left her the address of a house that's probably not even built yet? Oh yeah, oh yeah, the time difference. I don't have an address. Because I'm from the future. I forgot, I forgot. So what? I am not my brother's keeper. What? That doesn't even make sense. It's your world, not mine. I'll manage somehow in my own. That last phrase really made me squirm. You know what? Ah, another person. I didn't manage to finish the phrase. Someone was knocking at the door again. Come in! Huh. Ah, Uliana! Again, flew into the cabin. Why the rush, milady? I made an excessively showy bow. <laughs> Me? I'm just... Her eyes darted about cautiously and her cheeks were blushed. Just wanted to say goodbye. Ah, There will be time for that anyway. After all, we'll all be going on the same bus. Yeah, you're right, but it's kind of embarrassing in front of everybody. Oh, so there's something that you can be embarrassed by. 
I laughed. Uh, she pouted. I just wanted to tell you that you aren't a douche. <laughs> really, in fact, you're almost a cool guy. Her words astonished me. Well, thanks, I guess. You're good to hang out with too. And uh, you, you brought me some good loves. Well, that's that. She rushed outside, slamming the door loudly. Hey, didn't expect that from her? Did you? I got nothing to do with that, I told you. It really looks like you knew what she was going to say. Maybe I did. Maybe not. You just came here to mock me, didn't you? I started to lose my temper. That idea had also crossed my mind. Then why the hell are you hanging around here? If I ever need a man to comment on all my actions, I'll hire a professional psychologist. You think that after all this time, I don't qualify as one? My estimation is that after all the time here, that you've definitely gone bananas. All psychologists are freaks. Yes, but not all freaks are psychologists. He laughed out loud. A sense of humour? How encouraging. Frankly, your jokes are fairly lame. Who are you laughing at? At yourself? Wow, that's actually pretty true. Listen, if you've got nothing to do in your own world, go and bug that second one. And have you got anything to do in your world? Sorry. Um, the pioneer sharply countered. You know, I'll find out what to do. I'll pack up my things, leave this camp. And then what? Then what? Like I know. I've never been in such a situation before, believe it or not. It's just that you've forgotten that you won't be able to leave the camp. Yeah, he was right on this matter. Probably. Just because you failed to do so, that doesn't mean that I will fail too. You're the boss. Another person. There was a knocking at the door. So quiet that I barely heard it. Is it Lena? Damn, who else is it? I hissed under my breath and shouted. Come in! But the door didn't open, so I pulled the handle myself. Ah! Lena was on the doorstep. Hello! It looks like I really scared her. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You came to see Olga Dmitrievna. No, she said, staring at the ground. So what is it then? What did Lena want from me? Come in. She came in and hesitated in the middle of the room. Want a cup of tea? Want to take a seat? I pointed at one of the beds. Hmm. Lena hesitated a bit more, but nevertheless took a seat. Did something happen? Not at all, it's just... She threw a quick glance at me, but blushed at once and looked away. Here. Lena took something out of her pocket and handed it to me. I was stunned. It was my phone. But where did you get it from? I found it in the forest. Okay, but why do you think it's mine? Some boy told me so. Huh, have you ever seen him before? I don't know. I couldn't see his face, but he was dressed in a pioneer uniform. Okay. Everything was clear at once. And don't you wonder what it is? I looked at the screen. There was still some battery left, therefore the cell phone shouldn't just look like a piece of plastic to Lena. I don't know, some kind of game. Yeah, you're right. I quickly opened Snake in the menu and handed the phone to her. Here you go, a keepsake. Oh, what are you doing? I can't. Lena waved her hands at me. Take it, I have loads of these at home. Hmm. She resisted a bit more, but finally she took the device. And what do I do with it? Press the keys to move left and right. You've got to eat these pellets and keep from hitting your own tail. Wow, it's so interesting, she smiled. Thank you, and yet I have nothing for you, it's so embarrassing. I don't need anything, thanks. No, that's not good, she said with a voice that sounded more confident than usual. It's the last day, after all. Yeah, I hope we'll meet again. I think we will. Then I have a present for you. And what is it? Close your eyes. I did so. And promise that you won't open them until I tell you. Okay. No, you have to promise. Alright, I promise. In a moment, I felt a light kiss on my cheek. I was really eager to open my eyes, but I promised. Open. The room was empty. What a girl. The only thing I managed to say. So, how does it feel, stud? I heard malicious laughter from the place where Lena had just been sitting. So that's all your way, that's your new way of pranking me, eh? Using the others? Me? Pranking? God forbid. 
Indeed, you got a kiss from a sweet girl, thanks to me. On the cheek, but anyway. I really wanted to beat him up at the moment, but I wasn't even sure that he's a physical being here. I presume that this prank was on your last one, I said, calmer. Who knows, who knows? Isn't it fun? The pioneer laughed hard. Perhaps Professor Moriarty laughed like that, anticipating the success of his diabolical plan. You're certainly having fun, but I'm not. Relax, dude, there's almost nothing left. And here you go, your second lap. After you do a dozen, then you'll earn a pit stop. Although, you probably won't need me then. You'll figure out everything yourself. It's not like I need you right now, either. Oh, uh, what ingratitude. Just cut it out, man. If you'd ever. Just shut up already. No understanding. Shut your damn mouth! I screamed so loud that the walls trembled. Hmm. The front door suddenly burst open and Lisa came in. Is it just me, or has someone gone completely nutty nuts? She asked with fright. Well, you could say so, I answered angrily. Ah! Why are you yelling? Because I want to. I've already realised that the accidental arrival of Elisa was either planned by this pioneer or would be commented on him in a manner that I'd sooner drive a pair of nails into my ears than have to hear. Have you gone psycho or something? Elisa reclined on a bed in a laid-back manner. To what do I owe the honour? I came just for the sake of it, and you're just here screaming. You aren't doing anything for just the sake of it. I've got nothing to do. I pack my stuff. It's so boring. Well, well. If you think that I came to you because... She threw an angry glance at me and turned away. I really should have come after that. <laughs> I forgot about that. After what? I haven't said a word. Of course, you thought it instead. Oh, so you can read minds now. There's no read to read your mind. It's written all over your face. It was hardly possible to read anything on my face besides fatigue and anger. And what have you read there? This, that, that's none of your business. Well, it's not like I'm holding you here. Forget it. I'll go wherever I please. Don't boss me around. Okay, stay here then, for God's sake. Anyway, I liked Elisa's company much more than the pioneers. Hmm. I lay back and closed my eyes. It took Elisa a few minutes to break the silence. You really don't want to tell me anything. For example, today is the last day after all. So you're happy? Well, she babbled uncertainly. Well, I do want to say I'm sorry. I do want to say I'm sorry. Everyone's leaving. Good riddance. And that's all. You need something else? Holy shit, I'm being really mean to her. Don't you like it here? Her voice sounded unusual. I've seen better places. Damn, you're so dumb that speaking to you is a complete waste of time. She got up and headed to the exit. Yep, good luck to you too. That's a creepy face. Alisa turned to me. Her face was writhing with anger. Couldn't you at least have said that you'll miss me? Sure I will. Wimp. <laughs> wow. She slammed the door loudly. Stupid. Alisa didn't hear my last line, of course. <laughs> what a wayward chick, huh? As good as you are. And you, in that case. Of course, keep comparing me to yourself, I remarked mischievously. But what's the difference? We're in the same situation. I've just been here a little longer. Well, in fact, a lot longer. And you've already gone completely nuts. No wonder. His hoarse laughter was really pissing me off. Listen, have I already told you that she should be an actor? You do a brilliant Hannibal Lecter. Especially since you consider yourself a psychiatrist. I'll think about it. Well, now I must go. Maybe I'll see you again. Get lost. I turned to look at him, but the pioneer had already disappeared. Oh, finally. But nevertheless, why did he come? It might be the case that me, him and others like us are the only real people around here, but I desperately didn't want to believe that. All his speech seemed like some sort of complex game. Like he's trying to give me one hint after another, trying to lead me to something enabling me to discover some kind of devious plot. Too bad he's not really successful at that, because I'm out of ideas. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Time dragged on deceitfully slow, but it's 5pm already. It's common during the summer. If one counts the seconds and minutes, it seems that even a single hour would never end. But if one thinks of anything else, then the whole day flies by quickly. Very true. I decided to start packing. I mean, I only have my coat and my phone, right? 
They could leave without me. I quickly took all my winter stuff and shoved it into a bag. I almost was about to jump into the bed again, but the door opened and Olga Dmitrievna came in. Oh, I see you've packed already. Yeah, just now. That's great, let's go. I got up reluctantly, grabbed my simple luggage and followed her. Hmm. I really don't care what will happen next. Ah, oh, I miss Lena. Uh, am I going to say be able to say goodbye to her? I had long suspected that nothing was up to me in this world, and recent events had reinforced my complete confidence in this. I might wake up tomorrow in bus 410, or I might not wake up at all. And that's all, folks. That's all, folks. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> it's all that simple. There's no point in staying here. There's nowhere to run. Basically, my only exit is to leave on the bus with everyone else. Go into the unknown, into the wild. That's all I'd been doing for the last week, stumbling along a narrow path in pitch black darkness, unsure of where the beginning and where is the end. We were almost approaching the gates when I heard someone calling my name. Simon? Simon? Olga Dmitrievna, excuse me, just a minute. Okay, but make it fast or we'll leave without you. I headed for the bushes that the voice came from. Hmm. Simon? Simon? I waded through the thick greenery and came out onto a forest path. The voice seemed to be calling from nowhere. One moment it was behind a tree, now it seems to be behind my back. Probably it's one of those aliens from the parallel worlds, but I suspect that I haven't met this exact one before. We don't have much time. I'm listening. I know that you've already been contacted by him and him. Yeah. And I know what they've told you. Don't ask me how. Okay. But you know, you must know one thing, the thing I know. There's more than a dozen of us here, in fact, more than a thousand. But a lot of people got out. I've tried to digest what he said and phrase the right questions. Hm. Then why are you here? I stayed. Why? To help others find an exit. Wow, how generous. That's really generous. Why should I trust you? You're the third one already. Well, in fact, I'm not even sure that you all aren't just my hallucination. It's not about trust. Then what is it about? It's about the right choice. Consider this camp to be a giant maze. You should take a few right turns to find an exit. Okay, and how do I know which ones are right? You will know. Come with me. Where to? To the second lap. Hold on a sec. That pioneer said that my second lap will start tomorrow. He lied. The speaker raised his voice. He's gone completely crazy and he's trying to destroy all the others. So if I don't go with you and leave on the bus then I'll be destroyed, right? I don't know. Then why do you say so? Nobody ever returned after a conversation with him. Listen, why should I trust you? I was definitely on the edge. While that pioneer just mocked me and didn't seem to be a real danger, this one clearly spoke about things worth being anxious about. I couldn't decide which one should I trust. This problem is like trying to get a blind man to say whether the light in the room is on or off. He can only guess. Just like me. Hurry up, time is running out. Hey, wait a sec. Make a choice, are you coming or not? Oh man, oh man. Follow the voice. Okay, let's go. Anyway, he sounded more credible than that crazy pioneer. Of course, this solution could be fatal, but the alternative isn't any better. I just took a shot in the dark. Okay, so where are we going? We are already there. Hmm. My eyes had started to fade and I felt my consciousness leaving me. Achievement unlocked. Epic fail. Simon, bad end. Oh no! Did I die? Oh! I died! 
Oh man, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Man, this game this game is pretty interesting, but I feel like I feel like this ending is completely incomplete. In the sense that, you know, I love playing the game. The game has been amazing. It's been an interesting journey. Um, the past eight hours have been incredible. Well, seven and a half. But, or maybe close towards eight, but... Um, I do want to see all the other endings. Or most of them, anyway. I want to see, like, Lena's ending. So I guess that I followed the voice and I died. But I should have followed... I should have got on the bus. Um, yeah, I mean... It's a lot to process. It's definitely been an incredible game, though. It's definitely been an incredible game. And I'm definitely gonna record more today, I mean... Yeah, and that sweet ending with Lena, too. Okay. Do not follow the voice. No, you know what? I can't just believe you after only a couple of minutes. At least I've known the other guy for a little longer and his arguments seem to be more weighty. You'll be sorry. These worlds sounded like they were coming from another world. Those words sounded like they were coming from another world. The voice seemed to disappear. Of course, I couldn't be sure whether my choice is right or wrong. It was a blind guess enforced by a time limit. Nevertheless, whether I'm right or not, we'll find out soon. In a couple of minutes, I was standing at the bus stop with all the other pioneers. Everybody here, began Olga Dmitrievna. You are leaving our camp today and I'd love to tell you something in parting. She was visibly nervous and desperately lost for words. I hope that you'll remember the time you spent here for a lifetime, and that you'll only retain pleasant memories about Savanyuk. I also hope that you become at least a little bit better, manage to learn something and find new friends. Just come back next year. The camp leader looked away. Hmm. It's like she was trying to keep the tears inside. I didn't expect her to get so emotional. Although her speech sounded like complete nonsense to me, as usual, the pioneers started to crowd into the bus, babbling cheerfully. I decided to hold on a little and say a proper goodbye to this camp. All of a sudden, I felt a deep urge to throw a coin. Hmm. Of course, there's no fountain here, and honestly, I didn't feel like returning. But it's still just a superstition, and I don't believe in them. At least, I never believed in them before. Digging through my pockets, I found only a couple of candy wrappers, a pencil and a scrap of paper. I held them for a moment, then I squatted, put the paper on the ground and scribbled a few words. You are here for a reason. Grinning at my stupidity, I threw the scrap under the wheels of the bus and got into the cabin. Hmm. Who was that for? I found a place in the middle. But the strangest thing was that everyone sat in pairs and only I was alone. However, what's the difference now? I'll either disappear or everything will restart in a couple of hours. True. Very true. Okay. The bus was slowly moving towards the district centre, occasionally bouncing over the bumps in the road. I don't recognise anyone on the bus. It was impossible to see anything beyond the old windows in the pitch black dark of Anyway, I couldn't care less about the surrounding countryside. I just sat and waited for the inevitable. For the first time in a long while, my head was completely empty. The pioneers around me enjoyed the trip. Uliana and Elisa were playing cards. Oh, I see Elisa. But I don't see... yeah. Lena was reading a book and Slavia was sleeping. Miku was trying to start a conversation with Genia and Genia was really trying hard not to start killing people. As per usual, Electronic and Shurik were crafting something as always. I was the only one completely ignored by everyone. It might be a slightly far-fetched perception. I got used to the role of being the center of the universe in the camp. I thought that everything revolved around me. Well, there might be so up to a certain degree, but here and now I'm only a foreign object. An out-of-place molecule in the harmonic something of the universe. I'm not sure how long we'd spend on the road, but sleep had already decided to overcome me. Stay awake, stay awake. I was desperately trying to fight Morpheus, trying to stay awake as long as I could. Morpheus is the god of sleep. After all, it's just quite possible that today is the last day of my life. Then probably, it's reasonable to cling as hard as I could to these few hours of meaningless, 
useless existence. Yeah. However, physical fatigue, and more importantly, emotional fatigue, took its toll, and I fell asleep. <sighs> Day. Ah. Restarting loops. A sharp pain throbbed through my entire body. It felt especially sharply in my temples. It feels like they're ready to shatter into a thousand little pieces, giving the wind free access to my empty head. Probably I would not have been able to withstand such even five minutes of such torture if I hadn't opened my eyes in time. I was somewhere, it was impossible to tell precisely where. Hmm. My mind was caught in mist, my thoughts were confused. The moment between the unconscious and conscious states when you vividly remember your dreams. Oh well. Oh, I'm still on the bus. I was going somewhere by bus and was about to doze off when suddenly a girl came up to me and began to speak quickly. I couldn't understand a word, but the girl looked very upset. I failed to understand what she needed from me. Yeah. Time passed and she kept talking on and on. Oh yeah. It was getting really annoying. I wanted to ask her to cut it out or at least calm down a bit, but I failed. Either because I didn't manage to say anything Oh, because my words didn't reach her. Hmm. I couldn't even see her face. I was simply listening and staring. Staring and listening. Perhaps it wasn't important for me then. Surely you would not try to remember what a mosquito disturbing your sleep looks like. Surely you wouldn't manage to recall the frequency of its flapping wings. Or the inclination of its proboscis after that. And this girl is just one of millions of voices that disturb you from concentrating. From thinking. From falling asleep. The louder her voice grew, the harder it got for me to catch her words. The bus cabin, the seats worn by time, the uneven floor, the rusty ceiling, the cracked glass of the windscreen. Everything was floating away, along with her. And then I felt a unique sense of relief. It didn't matter how real the bus and the girl had been, it was nothing but a bug to me. And here I am, hanging in total emptiness and falling inside a dream. Oh wow, wow, dreams can be really something. Not quite a nightmare, yet definitely not something pleasant. I got up, rubbed my face to get back to reality, gave a loud yawn and prepared to clean myself up. It was really a grey morning. Unable to find my hygiene kit on the nightstand, I concluded that I could manage without it. Hmm. It was hard to get dressed, my hands were trembling like hell. I looked at my reflection in the mirror and checked out my two-week stubble. Well, perhaps old Gudemitana has a razor, but I'm back at home, am I not? I'm back at home. It was only when I went outside that I suddenly understood that I'm not in a pioneer camp. I'm back in my apartment, and I've just come out of my room into a passageway, not out of the cabin. I was overwhelmed with surprise, with dismay, with fear, even with terror. But how? How? I sat down on the bed and buried my face into my hands, trying to remember the chain of yesterday's events. Yeah, the bus, the last day of the term. Yeah, I fell asleep and woke up back home. Well, to some degree, it might even seem quite logical. It seemed that the initial astonishment has worn off during the first few seconds. After all, the fact that I came back like this after a week-long absence is no stranger than my sudden appearance at some pioneer camp of the 80s in the first place. The events of the last two days flashed before my eyes in an instant. Tudasa, Tudasa. That mysterious pioneer, his words. But how did I manage to get back to reality then? According to him, I was going to be stuck there forever, as there's no exit. On the other hand, I wasn't alone. That pioneer at the bus stop and the mystery voice emphasised the contrary, that the exit exists. Does that mean I found it? I managed to get out of the endless loop. Hmm. But how? Nevertheless, I wasn't sure whether I should rejoice or grieve. Over the last week, I kind of got used to the everlasting inner monologue, the search for answers and the in-depth analysis of everything, so I simply couldn't accept this fact as it was, without figuring out exactly what happened to me. Sure, 
He told me that I'm the only one who has observed the existence of other guys like me during the very first loop. But does that mean anything? Anyway, all his theories, all his ideas instantly collapse like a house of cards. I'm back home! Now I had to decide how I should react. Ah! <laughs> of course, I should rejoice. After all, I'm back to the real world. Back to my boring life. Maybe the last seven days were just a dream. Indeed, there's no absolutely no evidence that really I was there. That I was really there. I don't see my pioneer uniform anywhere. I look my age, just like I did before. My phone is on the table, fully charged. But one can't deceive by one's own memory. Well, actually you can. One can't live through such terrifically real experiences in a dream. I still remember the events of the whole week in great detail. Perhaps I was in a coma all this time. An ironic laugh escaped my lips. Nah, that's not an option either. Then, all's well that ends well. The last few hours in the camp flashed through my mind. Indeed, I wasn't hoping to get out, either from that camp or from that reality, and I was pretty much ready for another week. Another, and another one, and another one. I'd accepted my role, I'd reconciled with my destiny. And what was I supposed to do after all the stuff that happened? I heaved a doomed sigh, got up from my table with considerable effort, and went to the computer. That's weird, but according to it, only 14 hours have passed since my disappearance from this world. Not a whole week. Hmm. Interesting. A new message in the instant messenger. Hi Simon. Yesterday, it was legendary. See you later. My college friend. It was him who invited me to that party with the rest of his college friends that I was going to attend. Suddenly, all my senses came back to me. The headache, the dizziness, all the symptoms of a hangover. It looks like I was indeed at that party yesterday and I was partying hard. So there was no pioneer camp? But then, where did all these memories, emotions and feelings come from? All of this was so incomprehensible that I became enraged. I became cursing foully, began cursing foully, trying to tear my hair out and hammering on the keyboard with my fists. I didn't return to a normal state until there were no keys left on it. Why would I do that? Why should I care so much? Nobody worries when a dream or a hallucination ends. Moreover, people are usually glad that it happens. Was I really that prepared to stay there that my return to reality became so undesirable for me? And then a simple and obvious thought crossed my mind. Perhaps I'm just going insane. Indeed, madmen frequently have visions which they perceive as reality. Besides, I had all the symptoms of insanity. I never left... Okay, fuck. Alright. Simon! A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! I cried at the top of my lungs between bouts of manic laughter.
Forever Alone. Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synopsis, contents, key points, a prologue and an epilogue. And there is no book which, if you read it again, would not reveal new details you didn't notice before. Every story has its beginning and its end. Almost every. Wow. Is this it? Let's see, let's see. No! Oh. Well, that was Everlasting Summer. Wow. That was an amazing experience. That was hands down an amazing experience. Um, I do feel a lot incomplete though. I, those two endings are not enough for me. I'm going to go back and play. Because I thought I was going to get Leonard's ending, but I guess I missed something along the line. So I'm going to go back and do at least Leonard's ending, Slavia's, and Uliana's endings. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do... I'll see about the other ones, but those are the ones that I'm going to definitely do for now. Um, thanks guys for watching, it was an incredible experience, I enjoyed it so much. The music, the great, the story, it's amazing. The, la the last 8 hours have been a blast. <laughs> so, I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. I'll probably make... Um, I'm not sure how many episodes those arcs will take, if it's... If I could make a three hour video for each, or if I'll just have to do an entire new lap for each one. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys, stay awesome, and cheers!